Hey guys, Jessica Damo here, and it's time for the tutorial on how to make custom weapon effects for your army man. Also, please note that these, uh, this tutorial is very useful for action figures as well. So you, you can apply it across the board for your models, for your army man, for your action figures, whatever, you know, plastic things need cool translucent weapon effects. We're going to learn how to make those today. I am General Revel of the Earth Federation Forces, here to remind you to ask your parents for help before using a hot glue gun, as you might burn yourself or shoot your eye out, especially those of you who are older than 18. Before I go any further into my tutorial, I want to cover something that I figured out while filming. You don't need the detailed gun. In fact, my detail gun ended up being high temp, and that worked uh, not as well for me. So, the simple, you know, fatter end than the smaller end, low temp gun, that's what you want. Regardless of what I say further in the review, the low temp, fat nozzle gun is what you want. Okay, in order to make these effects, you're going to need a few things. First off, you're going to need whatever figures you want to put the effects on. Also, uh, there's a way to make the effects removable. Uh, if you want your effects to be removable, which is kind of hard with the army men, just because of how small they are, but it is doable, you are going to need some aluminum foil. Aluminum foil goes over the effect, the piece so that you can put the plastic on the aluminum foil and then peel away the aluminum foil and have just your cool weapon effect. You're going to need a hot glue gun. And you don't need a high temp hot glue gun. Low temp will totally work. Uh, that's fine if it's a multi. So, yeah. Basically, you need the hot glue gun. You need whatever you're going to put them on. You need some tin foil if you want to be able to make the stuff removable. You're going to need hot glue. They make glow-in-the-dark hot glue, just for the record. Actually, I haven't really worked with this. I have it, but I haven't really used it. I'm just using standard hot glue stuff. I hear that the Walmart sticks are the best and the cheapest. So, great place to get stuff. For larger things you're going that, that shoot outwards, like this right here, you're going to need something to use as a base. And little translucent plastic is the best thing. These are party sticks for cocktails that I picked up at the dollar store last spring or something. They were red and kind of translucent. I thought, that, that should work. So you see these uh, explosive bits sticking up out of this weapon effect that needs more paint? Um, that's these broken up into pieces. Uh, inside this huge laser shot is a clear stick that I got from, when you when you buy your your wife, girlfriend, or mother flowers at the flower shop, they always have these, these clear sticks that you stick the card on. That's one of those sticks. Those work the best, for real. But I encourage you to get a couple when you buy flowers rather than just running up there and stealing them, because that's kind of not cool. Or at least ask for a few, you know? <laughs> Uh, this is one giant <laughs> um, laser effect. It's meant for the big Zom up there, that big green monstrosity. The big uh, round part is his laser can. So, you know, laser can of death to kill mobile suits. So you can, you know, it's, it's quite limitless. That, but, oh, and final thing you're going to need, paintbrush and some translucent paint. So, hot glue, paint. Tiny hot glue gun, figures, aluminum foil, plastic base. Let's get started. It's important to have a surface that you can get hot glue on and get it back off, which usually comes off all right, but not always. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making our gunfire guy that we see right here. Just because he's the simplest. So we're going to apply a little bit of hot glue. And then we're going to hang him upside down. So, first two tries didn't work. So put a little on there. Just a little. 
watch out because the hot glue is hot. It burns! I think my Timmy soldier would like that if this was a, a low temp gun, but it's not. This particular gun is a high temp gun, and the Timmy plastic is melting just a little bit. Hang it upside down so we can try and get some shape to it. And you can use your tool to try and shape it as well. And use your fingers a little bit. This might look hard, but it's really not. Not doing anything hard. I'm applying hot glue and dangling it upside down. There we go. That's it. That's all there was to it. It's clear right now, but it'll look a lot better once we go over it with uh, some paint. Okay, so with our first soldier done, uh, which is really nice, I did melt the end of the gun just a smidge, but it's now encased in this hot glue rifle shot, so it doesn't really matter. So next we're going to do Bazooka Joe. We're going up in hardness, if you could call any of this really hard. So let me just put a big glob of super glue on the end of the bazooka. We want to kind of balance it so it stays there and cools a little bit, but doesn't uh, run. We want that kind of bubble. And we're going to just wait for it to cool. Sometimes blowing on it can help. I can also shape it a little bit. Once that translucency starts to go away a little bit, you know, you're getting there. I want a little around the edges. That's why this tiny gun is good. I might be able to pull this off with the bigger. But it's going to be hard. Whoops. Well, we're all right. Hoping the camera can focus well enough because both of my hands are busy doing the tutorial. I can't really change the camera's focus. You see, I'm just slowly building up the super glue there. And what we're going for is this guy here. And, uh,. You know, it's going to want to go with the flow of gravity. That's your big, you know, if there's a challenge, there's flipping the soldier up and down, up and down, so that your hot glue isn't just sagging while it cools. And there we go. Now we have our bazooka guy. He's just awaiting paint. We can make it a little bigger like the other one. But, uh, you know, every single one of them is going to end up unique. So now we're going to talk about the flamethrower. Flamethrower is probably one of my favorite effects. In order to do this, you're going to need a little piece of wire. I recommend the stuff that has a little bit of clear coating to it. You know, the, like your toys come in. But, like, you could steal something from, you know, the garbage sack ties and take the paper off and make that work. And this, again, is easy. So we're going to apply a little bit of hot glue here. And then, while flipping him upside down in order to keep it under control, we're just going to hold this piece of plastic right there. Now the first time I did this, I had to do it twice, just for the record. Don't be surprised if you have to do it twice. While stabilizing against the ground, we are going to provide a bit more hot glue adhesive. Just hold it there 
this will be the base you know what what holds your wire in place and so you're gonna have to wait for that to dry and that pretty much means holding it otherwise you end up hot gluing your figure to you know your table surface or whatever as the glue runs it's important not to nick your soldiers or toys with the hot glue guns tip as you will melt holes into them and uh, if you're hoping to battle scar there's better tools for that like a wood burner so now we've cooled enough I'm gonna get the other side so it's even start getting the beginning tip see we've got this lot of glue down there you know and it's all right it's all right so this is pretty firmly on now and then you just start going over it in teeny tiny amounts you know it's, I don't know what to compare it to you know, like you're pretending that you're putting on just a dab of paint. Your goal is is to very thinly apply randomized fiery gluey texture to the wire so that when it's painted it will no longer look like a wire. And the paint does a lot but the paint really brings out the details that the hot glue is able to give and you can always sculpt with the end of the hot glue gun so if you think something's just not rough enough you can just nick it nick your hot glue work with the edge of the hot glue gun and I try and get every side of the wire you know, to not have any of it exposed. So, you know, you kind of do four sides of it, and then you just try and get what's left. And since, you know, our wire is small, this really isn't a hard thing to do. You can see, we now have a translucent flamethrower. It's almost like he's got an ice gun. Oh yeah, ice gun! Woo! <laughs> and now it's bendy, and it can do cool stuff. <sighs> Ghostbusters! Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, going next up, I'm going to tackle Iron Fire Guy. You know, the second half of the flamethrower. This is easy. Again. Super duper easy. So we grab whatever guy we want to be on fire. And we just start applying hot glue. Just start, you know, wicking it on there. Wick, wick, wick. Run by. You know, I did actually use my uh, hot glue gun to, like, melt the mouth a little. Make him like, ah! <laughs> You know, you get the back and the front. Make sure you get some angles in there. Now, afterwards, you're going to have to go through and pull off some of the stringy bits. That's all right. That's part of it. And as you build up layers, you know, watch out for the areas that don't have any unless, you know, you don't want that leg on fire. This builds up texture, you know. This effect could be applied to different things. You know, you could have a giant spider and coat guys in a web or whatever, you know, a monster that just gets them. I'm going to get the gun on fire too because I think that's super cool Ooh, watch out for the hot glue it's hot at the moment and not much to look at but once you apply the paint then you start getting kind of the, the depths of the plastic start to appear better and the guys are pretty much the same this guy has some more layers to him you know you just keep applying layers of hot glue and I would say 
another round like I just did. Only maybe just a little more tame, you know. But he's probably 60% of the way there. He could be done. You know, it all depends. That's how you make that guy. So we've covered the soldiers so far. Now we're going to move a whole bunch of people out of the way. We're going to talk about how to make gun effects for something bigger. Okay, now we're going to make a machine gun turret on our armored car. On the vehicles, this is where the larger gun works better. And uh, definitely go for low temp. Because, you know, like the Gundam MSA action figures that I collect, their plastic is incredibly durable to heat. But the RMN just can't handle it as well. Turns out, this is a high temp gun. I thought it was a low temp. Oops. That's alright. It happens. So we always want to coat the end. The aluminum foil will help protect from heat as well. So that's good. And I want a point or something to stick out of this thing. I'm going to steal one of these. You could use a fork end. You know, a cl clear plastic fork. And the low temp glue, you'll be able to actually touch that a lot sooner than the high temp glue. It'll be easier for shaping. Give that a little bit of time to cool. That way it can stay in place. And actually we're going to try it on the end here. Let's see if that will work. Strengthen that. It's all about building bridges. I'm building bridges from the beginning of our hot glue to the extension of our hot glue, which is this plastic piece. And we're working on covering the whole thing, but we got to make sure this is stable enough that it can support it. Oh. This is so nice to use the low temp and not burning myself when I accidentally touch the glue or need to shape it. So, low temp is the way to go. I blunted the ends of probably every soldier I did by uh, with my high temp gun. And I think I could have pulled this off with this as well. So, in fact, we will test that right now as we wait. Let's just test that. Okay. You don't need the detailed gun. Memory failed me. We can use just the low temp gun like this. Oh, that'll work. Looks like our end didn't melt that time either. So that's good. Unfortunately, my shot was just a loss. This one's got to take some more than one try. It's pretty normal. You can just shape this as evenly or, you know, however you need it to go. So we're going to let that cool. For the tank, it's very similar. You, know, you can see the aluminum foil in here. And you just make a big glob. And you start making a glob on the end of that and on the end of that and on the end of that. Really, you know, working... Just like we did the bazooka, so it piles up. And you end up with something that looks like this. And as for big things like this, uh, this takes time. I don't usually have anything in there. What I do, if you can tell, is I make circles of hot glue. I usually get like a pan. Which this is not a pan, this is inside of an old dead computer. 
But uh, give an illustration. I'll make a big circle like this. I'll fill the circle in. Fill the circle in. Fill the circle in. Let it cool a little bit. Build another layer. 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 Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Until you end up with something like this. To get something like this, you take you know your plastic ends and you stick them in there. You continue to build your layers and then you just do like you did the gun blasts. That's how you end up with that. In the end, you just go over everything with either like Tamiya clear orange or Tamiya clear red or clear yellow. There's also a blue. And that's what brings these to life. And you're going to need more than one application of paint. Otherwise, it looks a little sketchy like this guy. But you will end up with an amazing flamethrower. You know, missiles being shot, tank shots, etc. So this is cooled now. You can see what it looks like. You know, very cool machine gun. Maybe it's a little long. I don't know. We could trim it. We could reshape it with the hot glue. This isn't melted because we are using low temp and this to protect it. And you could do this to your army men too. Then you just rip that out. Wow, that came out really clean. Usually I end up with some still in there. And uh, it's a bit loose. But you know what? That's not hard to fix. Just put a little in there. A little hot glue. Then uh, wet the end of this a little bit. Just use spit because that's what I got handy. Stick it on there. Move it around. Take it off. Congratulations. You just molded the end. Let it cool just a little bit. And you will have a removable weapon effect. Ta-da! It goes off. It goes on. It goes off. It goes on. You know, it's fantastic. And this can be really helpful for stop-motion animation. For instance, uh, I do stop-motion animation with my Gundam MSAA figures. These explosion effects I use, and then I shine a flashlight on them, and then I move the weapon effects, or I cha change it, for a bigger explosive piece, which this is the same as this, except that I didn't do the inside. I only did the outside. I just kind of like how that always looks. And you can stick wall mounting putty on it. And now your tank just took a hit to the tread. Yeah, but I use this stuff in stop motion animation all the time. I just shine a flashlight on it, kind of brightens it up. I do edit it a little in post to brighten it up more. Um, but you could just straight up do it too. Well, that's the tutorial on how to make custom weapon effects for your army men or other action figures. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, feel free to send me some pictures via Facebook of your work and where you applied this. Uh, if you make a video re review of any of your effects, uh, if you don't mind, give me a little bit of credit. Tell people to come check out this channel. I'd appreciate it. And uh, have fun, guys. Don't be afraid to try it. Just give it a shot. Go for the low temp gun. So much better. Remember, I was wrong at the beginning. You don't need the detail point. This will work perfectly fine.